Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows and adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Cloak and Dagger. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break everything down. Um, I'm kind of surprised that, I mean, it's kind of nice to see that they are kind of on good terms, both, you know, Tandy and Ty, especially they didn't kind of end off well as we saw last episode. But uh, I wasn't expecting her to kind of show up at his school like that. That's kind of interesting. I wonder will that be something she kind of does from time to time. Because it's like legitimately something I brought up before, but I feel like that's going to complicate things between him and Vita just because I'm thinking, like, oh, who's this like random girl you're chilling with? Especially because Vita knows that's the same girl that tried to steal his wallet before. So I don't know. Like, you know, you just expect that to be the complicated situation because it's not like Ty can say it explains everything about everything without it. Con I don't know. It just, I feel like it'd be a complicated situation. So I'm kind of halfway expecting that to kind of come pop up but we'll see but she does come to him and kind of tells him like obviously she's looking she took the files from um greg last episode from his safe uh we still haven't really like seen like the police side of that situation like uh whether they've really investigating that or not uh because it hasn't really come up we don't even know what tandy's mom is going through right now because i mean last time we saw she didn't know about greg being dead but i'm curious to see like like i said that was something that didn't even come up this episode at all but she took the files and she's, um, I mean, probably, um, cause I think you can't hide the bullet wound, but maybe like burning his body and burning the entire office to cover up all his findings and stuff like that. Maybe that kind of covered up and burned a lot of the blood. So it's not easy to deal with or something. Maybe they'll treat it like an accident or something like that. I, I have no idea. Like I said, that's probably something that's going to probably be safe for later on, but nevertheless, she's looking through the files and she can't find the person at the center of all of this she ends up like finding all these different lower level executives like the the b squad she's trying to find like the a squad the person that's behind all of this connecting it it's the only way she can find out what roxon is really up to and stuff like that so for her she's at a gala and everything trying to get inside of all these people's head because it's, it's kind of interesting because they both have different perspectives on like how they utilize this ability it's like oh yeah maybe we can do i mean this gives us a one-way look into people's hearts like people are like an open book to us i mean obviously it's one way but you know ty looks at it as like almost like an invasion of privacy because it's like you're taking a part of them that like unless they volunteer that to you you shouldn't really use that ability like that but for tandy it's like so much was taken from her already like maybe if she uses it she can take a little bit bad so you can not see her passing from one person to the next person everyone kind of hates this dude like that she's trying to figure out who he is or even one dude who had a thing where it looked like he was the dude we find out later on his name's peter was crawling under one dude's desk and he just kind of looked like a satisfied look on his face and you have tandy kind of like with raised brows been like oh oh wow so it's like okay we see where his thought process is. i think it's still more so of a Obviously, it's a metaphor. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's literal. I, I chalked it up to kind of be more of a metaphor of like, yeah, you serve me now. I'm tired of being your grunt. Now you have to serve me type of. That's what I'm I'm checking it as. But hey, maybe it's literal too. But um, in, um, Tandy ended up remembering where she remembered the dude from. It's Peter. He's one of the guys that literally came to her place, to her house when she was nine and told her like, yeah, your dad's responsible for all this, all the rocks on stuff is, you know, kind of basically left them with nothing. Like he's the one that kind of started. He's the one that came to her house. And even Tandy's like, I can't believe I actually forgot his face. So that was kind of an interesting development. Um, she even tracked him down to try to get like inside of his head a little, uh, cause at first she had the dagger cause she was going to stab him. But I guess like, you know, she had a second thought, like, no, like maybe I can find another way. I mean, to be fair, it's actually kind of interesting. Cause now that she's like no longer running, she's fighting to a certain extent. Like obviously she's like trying to figure this out, work her way up the food chain. It's kind of interesting. Cause she did once again, going down the route of, she did take Ty's advice and she's kind of applying it where it's like, she's going after the rocks on people and she's fighting. She's not running this time, but rather than just killing him, she probably wanted to see like whether or not he really was a good person or not, at least trying to figure out more turns out he's not a good person he's actually a terrible terrible human being because even in his head like obviously it's a you know more of a metaphorical manifestation of his hopes and stuff like that but there's a whole bunch of people like bodies floating up for him it's like oh yeah all the money he's making he's taking money off of dead bodies one person kind of wakes up and is still alive but he drowns that person so showing you that he's not afraid to kill or like get rid of smuggler anyone that stands in his way of you know like money is all that he cares about and it seems like oh he's here helping tandy like oh yeah like it's no problem helping you with your flat tire but it's like no if you get in his way he will crush you without a second thought is kind of what that's showing and it seems like he's done that before and one of the people is this dude named ivan hess who it turns out he actually worked with tandy's dad uh, nathan on the rig because his name was on the blueprints and it turns out tandy actually met his daughter um at the gala 
So that's going to be interesting. I'm curious to see because obviously you have all these different people kind of being their spokespersons for like, oh, yeah, this is what um, it's like. Oh, yeah, like I'm working for Roxxon. Roxxon is doing good trying to save the earth. And it seems because for them, it's like why, um, new life was found in waters or whatever it seems. So like she has the best of intentions, but it seems like she's kind of like whereas Tandy kind of got the raw end of the deal and just kind of got pushed out. It seems like. Ivan's daughter was kind of like welcomed in and it's kind of like a probably her and Peter have a nice relationship. It's probably going to be something like that. It's like, oh, he's almost like an uncle. He's like a, another father to me type of thing. Because for her, it's like, oh, my dad died in an accident. But now we look at what happened with um her dad. Maybe, you know, there's a lot more to it. I mean, the question is, like, when did Ivan die? Was this like before Nathan died? Was this like somewhere in between Nathan dying and present day, like in between that years of time skip? Like, what, what's going on with that? So, a lot of questions have to be asked about that. Like, you know, so potentially Tandy's might have found an ally in all of this is what I'm thinking. Like, is what that's kind of leading towards. So, Because so far, she's kind of handling this on her own. She's got a little help from Ty, but then, like, Ty's not, like, full on in this like she would be. If she found out, like, oh, Ivan, like, her dad potentially was killed by Peter, obviously it'd be, like, hard for her to prove that. But still, like, she has a potential ally with this whole Roxxon situation of bringing him down for after everything that they've done. So, what's kind of interesting and I thought was kind of pretty neat, because obviously at the same time, Ty's dealing with the game. For him, it's such an important thing. Um, because it's, you know, because it's so important, not just to him, but to everyone around him. Because this also goes back to the whole thing of, like, Billy was very good at basketball. And it's like, well, Billy, you know, kind of had still kind of in that phase of, like, having to live two lives you know, not only his life, but someone else's too, which I still, it kind of sucks that his teammate, one of the teammates that was kind of beating him up and kind of left him locked up. It's kind of like, well, yeah, it did some good, huh? Yeah. Kind of like you have, um, Ty just kind of letting it go. It's like, man, I would not let that go after what they did. He's like, yeah, just one more game. It's like one more game. kind of smiling and everything, but it's like, that sucks. I, I'd be like, fuck that. No, you ain't getting nothing from me. Like, we win this game, sure. I'm going to do it for me. I ain't going to do jack squat for you. That's at least my mind. Maybe that's Ty's mindset, too. Maybe he's just trying to put on a smile on face because he, you know, internalizes a lot of it. It's like, yeah, I've been distracted. I haven't been there. This isn't because this isn't just about me. This is about them. So maybe that mindset is kind of, or it's just about not letting his anger control him anymore so maybe he's kind of trying to let that go so maybe that's another way of looking at it I did like the fact is that during the entire game, his powers were going a little haywire because I thought this kind of a neat thing because they kind of like are like two sides of the same coin uh, the more and more Tandy uses her powers, it's kind of a balancing act, I guess it kind of like a push and pull kind of like um, well for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction is kind of like a line that was thrown out in the episode and it, it applies in that regard because the more Tandy's using her ability, the more like uh, Ty's ability kind of kicks in. So his was kind of kicking in. Like obviously someone tried to throw the ball and his hands phased through and it was like, what the hell is going on? It's because of that. And because unbeknownst to him, because they are drawn together, like when stuff like that is happening, because I guess it's kind of an issue that's affecting him. Like he, like he knows Tandy's doing something and I guess like his power like goes to him to tell him like, it's kind of like his power being like, yo, you need to go to Tandy right now. So it teleported him to her. And so he was kind of telling her to kind of knock it off using it as much. And then he was like, man, I got to get back to the game. But she's like, oh, yeah, this is important. This is the finals and stuff like that. So it's, she's like, she suggests him doing kind of a life-threatening thing. And he's like, no, man, I'm not about to do that. And she pushes him off the ledge. And it, then um, he falls into the water, luckily teleports away. So that's pretty neat, luckily for him. So... That's kind of, I thought that was kind of pretty neat. It's kind of interesting, too, when it was all said and done, like, Ty ended up touching, like, a lot of the basketball players. Like, it's come down to the wire. Like, there's a point difference. Um, and as he's passing, like, everyone's trying to block him. He's touching him. And each one's got their different issues. Uh, the referee even touched him. And he saw that basically it seems like the referee was probably either betting on this game. Like, he probably owed a bookie money. And the fact is he was betting on this game. Um, I can only assume, I, I mean, it might be tied together, but it also seems like, well, maybe someone was threatening him to like, oh, make sure that the game plays out this way. Cause it did seem like he was extra motivated to be like, oh, try and call stuff out. So I don't know. That's kind of how I chalk it up. 
But uh, that combined with a lot of what the players are going through, I think, I mean, that not think that's exactly why he threw the game. Because I guess for, and, and this is maybe my way of thinking of it, and this is how I interpret it, was because Ty's life, yeah, things are the way they are with Ty's life, but he's got a good life. They've he's got their own issues. So it's like, yeah, give them this moment, give them all this shiny moment, even help the ref out. I, I guess it's kind of how I'm interpreting it. But it's kind of like, yeah, they've all got their issues. Let this, this be at least a good moment in their lives, aside from everything, kind of pushing aside all their fears let them have this one shining moment of like glory you know and even when it was all said and uh, kind of being a little bummed you saw him kind of smile a little because he was happy because i guess for one there was such a heavy weight on him because he feels like you know he has to make you know because he has to make everyone proud he has to live up to it for his teammates his parents who you know are happy nonetheless because even his mom was like win or lose i'm gonna be there for you you know so that's how I was looking at it. Maybe that's not... A, I mean, because later on, Vita kind of... Which I think is kind of interesting that Vita can see through him. She's like, yeah, I know exactly what you did. He's like, what do you know? It's like, the ref, the other players? I'm like, okay, something's up with that. Like, shouldn't you be a little suspicious? I mean, maybe that's just kind of being like, she's very good at seeing people. I mean, there might be more to Vita than we kind of think. Just the fact is that she can see through him like that. I just kind of... I don't know. I think there's more to it than that. But oh, like I said, we'll wait and see. Maybe she's just very perceptive. But, um... That was just kind of interesting to me. But another interesting thing about uh, Ty's situation is that we end up finding out that obviously one of the people that used to roll with his brother back in the day, uh, Wayne, I was like, oh, he, business is good for him and everything. And Ty's kind of happy and stuff like that. He's like, oh, you know, don't be kind of so caught up in the past. Move forward, you know, look forward and stuff like that. But sadly, when it was all said and done, Ty ended up getting teleported there at the end of the episode. And it turns out that that dude who's a buddy of Billy's, is working with Connor. I was like, okay. So I was like, oh man, he's doing shady stuff. He's running the drug game and stuff like that. So it seems like he's the one that's behind all of this. Like him and Connor are partners. But I'm like, oh, that kind of sucks. But then it turns out, no, he knows exactly who the hell Connor is. He knows Connor is the one that killed Billy and he's still working with him. And that's just the most disheartening thing because it's like, oh, he thought like Wayne got away from all this world that he's doing good for himself. But now it's like, no. Because that was something I was wondering what was going to come up. Like I thought maybe now... Um, um, Billy, I mean, not Billy, uh, Ty might be more inclined to touch him to kind of see what his fears are and probably try and you, because like I said, like when he was using it, it was happening by accident because other people were touching him, but maybe, you know, kind of like Tandy, maybe he'll start using his more likely, you know, especially if he knows that the person's kind of a bad person, maybe for him, he won't feel as bad about it because it's like, no, this is about getting the truth because, O'Reilly can't do anything about the Billy situation because it's like, well, for one, it's for a cop that technically doesn't exist. Two, it also happens for a murder that, that technically didn't happen, you know, so a lot of that's kind of been swept on the rug. But then Ty kind of suggests like, oh, maybe drugs. So, you know, now like Ty, without unintentionally finds out there's a connection there. So he knows the guy, too. So that could be an in at least for uh Ty potentially, even though like O'Reilly was like, yo, don't get mixed up in all of that. Because it turns out like things were kind of pretty bad years ago on like in one particular area, the 12th. But it seems like everything kind of calmed down. Drug crime isn't as bad. I mean, drugs are still kind of flowing through there, but it's not as like chaotic, kind of the wild, wild west like it was back in the day, like a couple years ago. But then it's like, oh yeah, like O'Reilly's looking into it, and it's like, oh yeah, Connors is connected to a lot of that. So it's like, oh yeah, maybe it's just kind of he's like really good at his job, or maybe he's just connected to the person that's really like there's one distribute, there's like one person selling all the drugs now, and it's kind of being scattered around. So it's all coming from one person rather than a whole bunch of other different people, and Connors is connected to him like i was able to um tie uh storyline tying into that we do find out who it is so it does beg the question what about the other dude because his mom ty's mom was like oh yeah he's doing good for himself so it's like is he in the same boat is he in a different situation does he know about this was he forced to kind of keep his mouth shut maybe maybe him and wayne don't really talk anymore because he knows what wayne's up to it's like yo maybe he's you know maybe he was told to keep his mouth shut maybe i don't know i'm curious like how does that work how do you you know i guess because like he went through some tough spots for himself and maybe for him it's like yeah billy's dead and that sucks and everything but that's that's the past this is now that maybe that's why he can work with Connors because it's like yeah looking forward not back so that's how I'm interpreting it so and it's kind of interesting because we do see that O'Reilly uh it is kind of interesting we got to see Liam too because O'Reilly went to him for information which is like yeah he's still locked up uh Tandy still hasn't helped out with that situation but I mean to be fair yes that was kind of a duo thing so he's the one kind of suffering for it but I'm sure O'Reilly's gonna help him out of that just because he gave him 
her the information she needed. I'm curious to see ultimately what that happens, like when he kind of potentially gets back on the streets, like what that means between him and Tandy. Like she kind of left him high and dry, like what that means going forward. Uh, Tandy hasn't brought up Liam in a while. I mean, she's referenced him, but it's like never like a, oh, I'm going to help out with his situation. It's kind of like, eh, it is what it is. I mean, I guess she's so caught up in her own fight right now, like nothing else really matters. So she's got one problem in front of her, and that's the most important problem, and that's figuring out this whole Roxanne situation. You know, her dad's reputation and name were kind of run through the mud. They were kind of run through the mud. So payback, you know, so... But it's also interesting to me that it seems like O'Reilly was able to gain Connor's trust by, you know, obviously he's seeing her doing, dr like, drugs. And I'm like, okay, she even said it herself. She worked with, um, in NARC, so it's probably, like, doing it, it's no issue. Because I was like, oh, like, oh, that's kind of great. Like, I was like, oh, do you already just, do you naturally have a drug thing? Is that, like, one of your deep, dark secrets? But it's like, I guess the girl she was talking to kind of gave her the idea. It's like, oh, she can get closer to Connor's if she can just, like, make him think, like, oh, yeah, like, you're a cop that skirts around the line, too. It's like, if he already thinks that. But it's like, because of her years in NARC, where it's kind of like you have to do drugs to kind of make people think, like, oh, yeah, you aren't a, well, NARC, then uh, I guess that's why it's just kind of okay for her. Because it seemed like she was, I was like, oh, you're doing it super easy. Not unless some of that was fake that was on the table. I mean, that's potentially, too. But I feel like you don't want to take the chance that he might want to take a bump, too. So I'm like, yeah, that's probably real. And just because of her years um, working with narcotics, it probably helped with that. And that's, once again, what I'm, I'm feeling on it so like i said that a lot of interesting things went down this episode so i'm very interested to see what the like next episode has in store for us with all of this as everything kind of progresses forward like i said we have moments of them coming together obviously on purpose but other times not so on purpose but a lot of this is still them handling everything on our own so I'm curious to see what happens exactly, what's going to finally bring them together completely to work together on one particular thing. Like, is it going to be both their problems becoming one thing, or is it going to be like, oh, both working on one thing? Like, how that's all going to come together, you know? I'm very interested to see. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good night.